In this video, we're examining the updated scientific literature on the health benefits of combining cardio and resistance training, whether cardio kills muscle and strength gains, and advice about how to go about combining cardio and resistance training. Cardiovascular fitness tends to have strong correlations with lowering all-cause mortality. A 2018 cohort study found a higher VO2 max was associated with lower mortality risk. Resistance training also provides health benefits and can help preserve fast-twitch fiber contractile functionality, something aerobic training may not be as effective for. Resistance training also has been associated with lowering all-cause mortality to varying degrees. Overall, combining cardio and resistance training likely has added benefits. A 2019 meta-analysis indicates resistance training alone was associated with a 21% decrease in risk of all-cause mortality, while cardio plus resistance training was associated with a 40% decrease in risk of all-cause mortality. However, many have the concern that cardio kills muscle and strength adaptations. Let's assess if this is really a concern. Traveling back to the 1980s, a study by Hickson seems to be the origin of the interference effect, the idea cardio kills gains. Dr. Hickson had a strength group train their lower body five times a week, an endurance group perform cardio six times per week, and a combined group that performed both the strength and endurance training. After 10 weeks, the combined group saw lower squat strength gains than the strength group. A major consideration is the training was quite extreme. Subjects lifted five times a week and performed cardio six days a week. The fact the combined group saw a decrease in their strength midway through the study may allude to them being overtrained. What has the research on combining cardio and resistance training found since? In 2012, a meta-analysis combined the data of all the current studies up to that time and found when compared to resistance training only, combining cardio and resistance training did produce lower magnitudes of strength and muscle growth. Many of the studies in this analysis were not as extreme as the Hickson study, involving more typical resistance and cardio training frequencies. So at face value, this 2012 study would seem to confirm the interference effect, cardio impaired gains. There are also speculations that cardio training produces an intracellular signaling response that directly inhibits the anabolic response from resistance training. But the research has progressed since. With the speculation that cardio produces a signaling response that directly inhibits the anabolic response from resistance training, animal studies support this. Human studies fail to support this and demonstrate that these signaling pathways are complex and not mutually exclusive. As for the long-term research, a recent meta-analysis combined the data from the updated literature and found that combining cardio and resistance training did not lead to lower strength and muscle growth versus resistance training only. Importantly, a subgroup analysis on the studies on trained individuals did not change things. Muscle and strength gains were not lowered when combining cardio and resistance training for them. Another 2022 meta-analysis likewise found whole muscle growth was unimpacted by combining cardio with resistance training. So the updated scientific literature indicates cardio doesn't interfere with muscle and strength gains as much as once thought. Rather adaptations essentially are not compromised. By no means am I saying cardio training will never ever impact muscle and strength. Context matters. Most of the studies included in the new meta-analyses involved pretty moderate amounts of cardio and resistance training. Cardio training for 2-4 to four times a week for 20-45 to 45 minutes a session, with resistance training for 2-4 to four times a week with 3-4 to four exercises per muscle group for a few sets each. So it's under these conditions cardio training has little impact on muscle and strength gains. Under more extreme conditions, things almost certainly change. Prepping for a bodybuilding competition while also prepping for a marathon probably involves the interference effect. Following David Goggins' running and cycling routine while prepping for a powerlifting meet probably involves the interference effect too. Remember the 1980 Hickson study alludes to this, high-frequency cardio and resistance training impaired squat strength gains. Another consideration is your resistance training experience. We mentioned in one of the 2022 meta-analyses, a subgroup analysis on trained individuals still indicated combining cardio with resistance training did not compromise muscle and strength gains. Yet, these trained individuals were mostly not highly trained. As hypothesized in the 2017 review, the interference effect may become more pronounced in highly trained individuals. As a final point for this section, 
we've only been discussing muscle and strength gain so far. But for those interested in power adaptations, the 2012 meta-analysis, as well as one of the updated 2022 meta-analyses, indicate power adaptations are quite notably compromised when combining cardio and resistance training. So if you're someone who sprints, jumps, or performs explosive lifting, like Olympic lifting, there's a good chance combined cardio training will notably diminish your gains with these things. Cardiovascular training can generally be classed as high-intensity interval training or continuous training. High-intensity interval training alternates between periods of intense exercise with less intense recovery periods. Continuous training involves exercising at a steady intensity for a duration. Both will generally improve your cardiovascular fitness, but the precise adaptations likely differ between them as detailed in this article. From a long-term perspective, combining both with perhaps a disproportionate emphasis on continuous training ultimately probably produces overall better endurance adaptations. Nevertheless, some may be wondering from a muscle and strength gain perspective, is it better to perform high-intensity interval training or continuous training? In the updated meta-analyses mentioned, both high-intensity interval training and continuous training were involved in the various studies, and we know the results indicated combining these things with resistance training didn't compromise muscle or strength gains. However, quite interestingly, one of the meta-analyses found that when looking at fast and slow twitch fiber growth specifically, combining high-intensity interval training with resistance training did compromise growth versus resistance training only. This wasn't the case when combining continuous training with resistance training, Slow and fast twitch fiber growth was similar in this case to resistance training only. This is paradoxical, since the same meta-analysis found with whole muscle hypertrophy, neither high-intensity interval training nor continuous training compromised gains. How can whole muscle size be unimpacted by combining high-intensity interval training or continuous training with resistance training, but fiber growth is impaired by combining high-intensity interval training specifically with resistance training? This is a common problem in the research. Muscle fiber growth measurements don't always agree or strongly correlate with whole muscle hypertrophy changes, and I believe we should be cautious of the muscle fiber growth data. To assess this, biopsies must be taken, and they can only look at a very small number of muscle fibers, so it's not always representative of all muscle fibers. On top of this, if you take multiple biopsies from the same person, the size of their slow and fast twitch fibers can vary quite a bit. This can render the measurement unreliable, since different biopsies are taken before and after a study to measure the growth of the muscle fibers. As a result, I would not use this data to demonstrate high-intensity interval training specifically can kill muscle growth. The overall evidence still indicates whole muscle hypertrophy isn't compromised by adding either high-intensity interval training or continuous training. Again, the context of these studies matter. Moderate volumes of resistance and cardio training were mainly involved. There is a case to be made that high-intensity interval training is more fatiguing than continuous training. So with more extreme volumes of training, an individual may prefer more continuous training to keep recovery in check. We've yet to discuss whether a person should perform cardio and resistance training in the same session or in separate training sessions. The updated meta-analyses involve studies performing cardio and resistance training in the same session as well as different sessions. And given that overall analyses indicated no interference effect, this data might suggest it does not matter if cardio is performed in the same or different session. However, if we isolate studies done on trained individuals and then perform an analysis on performing the cardio in the same or different sessions, which was done by a different 2021 meta-analysis, strength gains are lowered when performing cardio in the same session, but not when performing it in different sessions. Muscle hypertrophy measures weren't assessed with this analysis, but I presume performing cardio and resistance training in different sessions is probably going to be more favorable overall for trained folks. So if it's practical for you, I would recommend it. If you have no choice but to perform cardio and resistance training in the same session, I'd recommend performing your resistance training first before cardio, since if you do the reverse of this, fatigue from the cardio session has an increased likelihood of impairing the energy, effort, and thus stimulus you can produce with resistance training. We also haven't discussed the mode of cardio, the two most common being running and cycling. The updated meta-analyses involve studies using both cycling and running, and subgroup analyses on either of these did not change the results, suggesting both cycling and running are fine. Now, running involves higher muscle damage than cycling, 
and this could be an issue if you're performing high volumes of aerobic training. But with moderate volumes of overall training, it's probably not an issue, as implicated by the updated meta-analyses. It's also worth mentioning your body does produce adaptations that make you resilient to muscle damage, termed the repeated bout effect. So the overall amount of damage you'll experience from running should decrease over time. Ultimately, I do encourage individuals to experiment and find what's suitable for them. Combining cardio and resistance training can provide tremendous health benefits. As nicely described by the folks over at Stronger by Science, the interference effect is becoming less scary by the day. Updated meta-analyses fail to observe muscle and strength are interfered with additional cardio training. Now, moderate overall volumes of training were largely used in the studies, and subjects were far from highly trained. It's presumable higher overall volumes of training and being highly trained increases the probability of the interference effect occurring. Yet, I am skeptical even in these situations that the interference effect would be as large as a lot of people think it would be. If it's practical, it's probably more favorable to perform cardio and resistance training in separate sessions. Remember things like nutrition, sleep, and stress levels are important. Dialing these things in will presumably lower the magnitude of any potential interference effect. Lastly, I do encourage individuals to not be afraid of experimenting around and figuring out what works for them. If you'd like to support the House of Hypergraphy, consider checking out Alpha Progression, a truly unique and advanced fitness app I've partnered up with. You can add your own program or use their custom workout generator that produces excellent programs. You can periodize reps and reserves and sets, and schedule deload weeks. The custom workouts can still be edited to your liking. Workouts can be tracked live, and the app generates solid progression recommendations across sessions. It has a clean design with a database of more than 450 exercises with great text and video tutorials. Aesthetic graphs can track virtually any measure across time, like bench press strength, number of workouts a week, body weight, and even set numbers per muscle group and circumference measures of body regions. The link in the comments and description takes you to the app, and by using this link you'll have two weeks free of all its features, plus 20% off a yearly or monthly subscription. If you do purchase the app, House of Hypertrophy will get 50%, so this sincerely helps support these free videos. Thank you. Finally, I have a free ultimate guide to bench pressing ebook that covers these areas. Feel free to get it in the link in the comments and description.